Welcome to Etsy Success Strategies, the audio series, where you get to listen to and learn everything you need to know about selling on Etsy, one audio recording at a time. This episode is titled Experiencing Etsy from a Buyer's Perspective, and this is recording number 196. This episode is also a sneak peek of what you'll get when you subscribe to the new premium service I'm offering. And if you'd like to know when it goes live, please visit convome.com forward slash read to me. That's R-E-A-D-T-O-M-E and complete the form there to get on the early notification list. Now, in May 2017, Etsy announced some changes they were making to the marketplace to make the buying experience for shoppers more satisfactory. The thinking is that if buyers are happier shopping on Etsy, then that will result in increased sales for you. Here's a summary of the updates they made and how they might possibly affect you. And no, you don't have to hold your breath expecting the worst. Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Hijama Elazu. Okay, so the first update is the new promotions tool. There's a new section in your shop manager that allows you to very quickly and easily set up and run sales and promotions for your products or your entire Etsy shop. Now to get to it, go to shop manager, then marketing, then sales and coupons. On the Etsy marketplace side, as of August 22nd, 2017, there will be search filters and tools for buyers to use to find items that are on sale or that have special promotions. Now, the main benefits of this new tool for you include As I mentioned before, there's the ease of scheduling and running promotions. Also, you can schedule a sale or create a coupon or more to share with specific customers. And the tool allows you to take anywhere from 10 to 70, that's 70% off your prices. And you can also set minimum order requirements so that a buyer has to purchase either a certain minimum quantity or dollar amount before the discount applies or, you know, your currency amount. And this actually is really a handy feature because it gives you more control over the sale and how much you can make. If you're strapped for ideas about when to offer sales and promotions, because you don't want to do it too much and you want, you might want to take advantage of it, you can use the key shopping dates feature in your shop manager to get suggestions on what events or seasonal trends are happening and also what types of products shoppers will be looking for during those times. To get to your key shopping dates section, again, go to your shop manager and then go to marketing and then key shopping dates. The information in this section here in the key shopping dates section changes throughout the year. So be sure that you come back and check it on a fairly regular basis. Some things you might want to do promotions for and some things you might not. So um, just use the information the way it benefits you the most. And if you want more information about this, listen to my Etsy Success Strategies episode 210, that's 210, where I discuss this feature, the key shopping dates feature in the shop manager in the detailed walkthrough that I did in that episode. Now, another benefit of this new promotions tool is new customer attraction and retention of repeat customers. So Etsy now has filters so that buyers can shop for sale items in the marketplace. Now, as a seller, when you create a sale or a promotion, the listing pages and listing cards for the items that are being promoted will be updated by Etsy in the search results. So then buyers will be able to clearly tell that they have a special promotional offer when they're browsing. The listing cards will show the sale price that the item is, as well as what the original price was. And then the original price will have a strike through um, on it. So they know that, you know, what the difference. If you've opted to have a minimum order, then it will also say with minimum and then whatever the minimum is. So shoppers will be able to, actually they won't, shoppers won't be able to use 
more than one of our prelisting. So, yeah. Now, a third benefit of this new promotions tool is the stats that you'll have access to about the promotions you'll run. So with this new promotions tool, you'll get detailed performance stats so that you can make changes as necessary. Stats will include the quantity that's sold as part of the promotion, as well as the revenue that was generated from each promotion. So this is really good. Then you can tell if it's working and if it was worth it. And then if it was, then you can decide how often you want to do those types of promotions. And if it wasn't, then, you know, lesson learned, move on. Now, the final benefit will be good news to those of you who've tried to use coupons in the past. Now, when you create coupons, you'll get a URL that you can share with shoppers or your customers. And when they click on the link, it will automatically apply the coupon or the sales promotion to their shopping cart. So there's no more having to enter a code in at checkout or anything like that if you use this URL option. All right. So that's it for the new promotions tool, our sales and promotions tool. The next update that Etsy announced is them working on the trust factor, I call it. So at the time I'm recording this, Etsy is currently working on a project to test ways to increase shoppers' trust in you by showing your star rating and your reviews on your product listing pages. So they say that they also want to highlight other important features about your shop, but right now I don't know what those other features are. And um, when this trust factor experiment, I called it that, they didn't call it that, that's me calling it the trust factor experiment. When it officially begins, uh, when it becomes a thing on Etsy, I'll let you know. Update number three, other product recommendations. Okay, For this one, you can hold your breath because at first blush, you might not like what they have planned. So in a nutshell, Etsy says that buyers like to have more recommendations for products when they're shopping. So you think about your own behavior when you shop online and then you can decide whether or not you agree with this. Do you like seeing recommendations when you're shopping online or not? Either way, that's what they said. So Showing recommended items from multiple shops on listing pages is actually not a new thing. Etsy has been doing this since 2013 for shoppers that arrive to the Etsy website through the Google ads that Etsy pays for. So Etsy says that doing this, showing recommended products has actually resulted in an overall increase in purchases. So now, based on all that, Etsy is going to start testing, showing recommended items on some listing pages, depending on the referral source of the shopper. That's, you know, where the shopper came from or how the shopper landed there. Specifically, if they come from a search engine search or from a post on social media. So now the experiment actually began in late May slash early June. That was when they announced they were going to start doing it. And what they're doing is showing listings from other shops within another shop's product listing. Then in your stats, you'll be able to see how many visitors came to your shop from another Etsy shop. Now that sounds all fine and dandy. However, just think about this. The reverse is also true. So listings from other sellers will also show up within your own product listing. When you think about it that way, it doesn't sound so bueno, but there's fortunately a way out if you don't like the idea of having other sellers' products showing up in your own product listings. And I'm going to walk you through how to share a link without recommended listings showing up. Now, first, you'll need to create a personalized link for your product listing by adding your shop name to the listings URL. So when a customer goes to your listing by clicking on this personalized link that you'll create, they won't see any recommendations from other shops, only your shop information and your shop stuff. 
Now, if you want to share a link on Twitter or Facebook or wherever on social media, the default URL will be something like this, etsy.com forward slash listing forward slash one, two, three, four, a series of numbers. Now, instead, if you want to make sure that um, other recommended listings don't show up when you share your links, what you'll need to do is add your shop name to that URL to personalize it. So instead of etsy.com forward slash listing forward slash one, two, three, four, or five, it will be etsy.com forward slash your shop name forward slash listing forward slash one, two, three, four, five. So just remember that this really only applies when you're sharing your links like on social media. Another thing to note is that if you share your links to other products within your product listing descriptions, and by the way, doing that is actually a really great way to cross promote your products. So if you aren't already doing this, then you really should start doing it. Cross list with not cross list, but within the list, your listing description of one item. If you have something else that's complementary to it or something that goes goes well with it somehow, and you think they would pair well together, and it can be more than one thing, you should link to that in your listings descriptions and tell buyers, oh, by the way, if you like this, you might also like this, or this goes together well with this. So anyway, if you do that, then you should be aware of the following. One, that if you shorten the link to only show the listing number, then shoppers won't see the recommended listings from other shops. However, if you remove the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, if you remove that section from the URL, then shoppers will see recommended listings from other Etsy shops. I don't know how, but this is just how it works. Now, I shorten the URLs that I put within my listing descriptions. I use bit.ly. Well, it's bit.ly, bit.ly, but it's just called bit.ly. And um, you don't have to use that one if you want to shorten your URLs. There's a Google link shortener which does the same thing. So if you do shorten your URLs, then remember to personalize the URL that you're shortening before you shorten it, or then all this will be for nothing. And then other listings will show up other, you know, shops listings will show up. Okay. Now you can exhale and let's talk about other changes Etsy has in the works to make the marketplace better for buyers. The next is the search experience. So Etsy announced that they have been working on improving the search experience since about the beginning of this year, 2017. And that included implementing things like the item attributes feature, which if you're like me and you had to go in and update over 200 listings so that they would be optimized for search in Etsy studio as well, was a huge undertaking and not very pleasant. But currently, they say they are testing <clears throat> category search filters based on item attributes. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but it's supposed to help give buyers better search results when they search. So it's being tested. I guess we'll learn about it later. Finally, sharing the wealth. That's what I call this update. So Etsy has said that they will share data about buyer behavior on the main Etsy site that they are privy to. They'll tell you as a seller what that behavior means for you as a seller and how you can use it to your advantage. And also they'll keep sellers informed about what tools and additional features they're working on. All right, so that's it for the updates thus far um, on Etsy trying to make um a give customers a better selling experience on on the website if you like what you heard in this episode and you think you could benefit from having this type of detailed educational tutorials about ways to make your etsy selling experience better and more profitable or to just stay informed about what's going on with and on etsy then please consider getting on the early notification list for 
Etsy success strategies, the audio series, once it launches, go to convome.com forward slash read to me to sign up. Now, please go and log into your Etsy shop and do something constructive with what you've just learned. And if you still have questions, you can leave them in the comments section below this episode and I'll do my best to answer them. Lastly, if you found this helpful, could you please help me spread the word about this resource to other current or aspiring Etsy sellers? I appreciate your help and I appreciate you listening. I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. And while you're there, please leave a review too. visit convome.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode.